Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a, a time of worship. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered in God's presence, separated by distance, but unified in God's love. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The talk I've, I've chosen today is from the Song of Lamentations, which was part of morning prayer this morning. It goes like this. Is it nothing to you all, you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his anger. For these things I weep. My eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will not reject forever. And though he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. I guess we're all dealing with these strange days in our own way. Some of us will be spending all our time on the phone or social media. Some of us looking inwards. Some of us just needing to keep busy all of us are missing the very ordinary things of our lives. Things that we just take for granted. Most of all, just being with others. Whoever it was who wrote the Book of Lamentations was trying to give expression to the outpourings of a whole community of people. People who'd lost everything. Absolutely everything. People who wept but they wept with their friends. Their private grief is a shared event. Each person's suffering is something that all can share in. I wonder if this passage is affirming that it's okay to feel a whole welter of emotions. We should just express them as they are so we can give it all to God in prayer. Some of us will find it easier to share how we're feeling, whilst other of us, well, we just bottle it up. Maybe though it's important that others know when we're down, that we're not alone, that others are there for us, even though they can't be with us physically because we're all part of Christ's body. Each person's suffering matters to us all. Simply being there for someone else, listening to one another, praying for one another, and when necessary, weeping with one another. At the heart of this lament 
there is certainty in God's steadfast love. God's love never runs out. It is created new every morning. As same sentiments being captured in the well-known hymn by Thomas Chisholm. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Because of God's loving kindness, God's mercy, we are never alone. God is with us through all of the times and seasons of our lives, even through the toughest times. And the sun will still rise and the dawn will cast its new light on each one of us. It is God's act of faith in us. And our response is to affirm our faith in God, a God who never gives up on us. So let's do that now as we turn to our statement of faith, which is on page eight of the prayer book. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our collect for this week. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we spend time in prayer. We pray for the things that are on our hearts this day. For the people on our hearts this day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are busy today. For those dealing with logistics. For those caring for others. For those keeping buildings clean. For our police and our firemen and our ambulance drivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are ill, for those who are caring for them. And we pray too for all who are grieving, and for funeral directors, and all who are caring for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves in our needs. And we just take time to give that to God. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We gather all our prayers together in the words that Jesus told us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>